All right. We are moving forward, I guess. Yes. Uh, okay, let's start with mantra. Om Mukham Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhaya Tegirim Yat Kripa Tammaham Vande Paramananda Madhavam Great, I'm projecting the text. So we stopped at number 26, about three types of doers, actors. Mukta Sango, Anaham Vadi, Dhrityu, Dhrityu Tsaha Saman Vitach, Sidhya Sidhyoh, Nirvikarach, Karta Satvika Uchyate. Most probably we read it, but we didn't dwell on it. So, free from attachment, Mukta Sangah, whose Sangha is, Sangha is attachment, is gone, or, or is free, free from attachment, who is free from any mm, kind of, yeah, attachment is the best word. Anaham Vadi, saying, never saying aham. So never saying I, and this is quite difficult to do in English language because without I there is no sentence in English language. <laughs> so English prefers active voice, yes, as you know. And every time when I'm typing some text, I use a passive voice, and it is always trying to correct me. Say it in active voice. Yeah? So passive voice is not preferable, but for Sanskrit, Passive voice is 80% used, yes? So Sanskrit prefers passive voice. Instead of saying, I build the house, uh, in Sanskrit it would be said, um, the house is built by me. So this, the house is built by me is more preferable. I am not in the front. You know? It can be built by you, by them, by whoever, but the house is built is the major topic. So being free, not saying aham, not saying, so not using active voice, let us say. Dhriti utsaha saman vitah, who is full of fixed resolution and calm rectitude of zeal. That's how Sherabinda translates. Annihilated by success, Siddhya, Siddhi Asidhyoh, Nirvikarach. He is not determined or he is not bent, he is not distorted neither, or neither by success nor by failure. Karta Satvika Uchyate, such a doer, um, that doer is called Satvik. So, first of all, free from attachment. Second of all, not interested to promote himself in any way, in the mind or in the action, who is full of resolution, utsaha, and dhriti, stability, steadfastness. Siddhi asidhyoh nirvikarach is not bent or not redirected, not deviated neither by success nor by failure. This type of actor is called Sattvic. Then, what is Rajasik one? Ragi, Karmaphala Pretsuch, Lubdhach, Hinsatmako, Ashuchich, Harsha Shokan Vitach Karta Rajasach Parikirtitach. So the Rajasic Karta, the doer, is known Parikirtitach as the one 
who is full of harsha and shoka, um, excitement, enthusiasm, <laughs> and uh, pain, suffering. <laughs> Ashuchik, never pure, so to say, far from purity. In Satmakach, who is creating a lot of himsa, um, what do you call it? Violent. Often violent and cruel and brutal in the means he uses in Satmakach. Lubdhach, greedy. Yes, the, excuse me, Vladimir. Yes. This himsa is the opposite of Aimsa? Yes, absolutely. Yes. From Rudhims to, to hurt, Ahimsa is not hurting. Mm. Lubdhach from root lub to what we have in, uh, in the European languages as love means this kind of greedy uh, excitement or uh, he translates greedy simply here, Lubdhach. Uh, possessed by uh, this um, strong desire to, to get something. Ragi. Um, passionately desirous of fruit, karma pala pretzuch and dragi, eagerly, uh, eagerly attached to the work. Hmm. Interestingly, ragi is the one who has a lot of uh, color, very colorful, very full of energy. Yes. From here. Raga and Dvesha. Raga is like um, liking and disliking. Yes? Full of liking, full of desire to get the fruit, very greedy, uh, very full of um, this violent and cruel and brutal in his means he uses. Ashuchich, he is impure. In Harsha Shoka Anvitach, uh, he's also full of uh, excitement and passion, passion, passionate. Yeah, full of joy in success and grief in failure. That's how she Rabindu puts it. Shoka is shock. We have the same word, interestingly. And Harsha is this. Uh, where hair stands up, you know, where you have these go goosebumps, uh, and that is harsha. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, Rajasic uh, actor, doer. And Tamasic, Ayuktach, Prakritach, Stabdach, Shatho, Naikritiko, Lasach. Vishadi dirgha sutricha karta tamasa uchyate. I will read Shirobindas first and then we'll go word by word. One who acts with mechanical mind, who does not put himself really into work, who does it mechanically, is stupid, obstinate, cunning, insolent, lazy easily depressed, procrastinating. That duo is called tamasic. Vishadi, easily depressed, Dirga Sutri, who is pulling, as we say in Russian, pulling cat on the tail, you know. He's not doing the work, he's all the time extending, always postponing. Come tomorrow, you know, this kind of nalike, nalike, you hear in the office. This kind of not being, not wanting to be engaged. Uh, lazy, alasach. Um, insolent, naikritikach, nikriti, interesting, shatcha, cunning, stabdach, obstinate. 
Prakritach, interestingly, Shubendus translates as stupid. But Prakritach literally means natural, following, uh, or maybe not, maybe there is some other meaning, which I don't know. But literally it is natural, Prakritach. Let me change the check. Original, natural, normal, ordinary. Also vulgar, yeah? provincial, low, unrefined. Low, low, vulgar man. So this type of ordinary, low, vulgar. And then, so we see three types of doers. Yes? One is uh, disinterested, never promoting himself, uh, steady in his effort and his um, steadfastness or um, holding on to what he does without any deviation. He is not disturbed neither by success nor by um, failure. That is sattvic. The rajasic is the one who is very excited, who wants the fruit, who is very greedy, who can create harm and impure, and also very easily um, full of joy in success and grief in failure. And tamasic is uh, mechanical, ayuktach. Prakritach, vulgar, uh, stabdhach, uh, so prakritach, obstinate, stabdhach, cunning, shatchach, uh, naikritikach, insolent, uh, lazy, alasach, vishadi, depressed. You remember first um, first chapter was vishada yoga, yoga of depression, because Arjuna fell into this state, Dirga Sutri, procrastinating, delaying, and this is Tamasic Karta Dua. If you want to say something on this, please go ahead, because we are done with Dua, we are moving into the next section. Do you see yourself in all of it? <laughs> Most probably, yes, I see myself in every one of them. In the West, there is an ideal of being enthusiastic, of being rajasic. Yes? You have to have that ownership of what you do. You have to... But these ideas of being free from attachment, mm, they're less prominent in a way. Though they are always welcome. Yes, you can see them that um, in, in the West, they love these ideas that you are not egoistically attaching yourself too much to the action, not claiming of it to be yours. But sometimes it also looks like you are not interested in doing in, in this job. Yeah? You have to be interested in the job. You have to die for it. Otherwise, I'll, there is no feeling in you, no emotion which one can um, recognize as something valuable in life. If, if uh, it could be possible to change the order, I, then I'm, I can see the spectrum of the, the two extremes of the, the, the press, depression and anxiety. And then I, I, I prefer to to fix in the middle the sadbik, like the in the present time, in the center, in the right, right. mind and right attitude, balance, equilibrium. Right, right. And there is a very great advantage of being sadvik karta, and that is the that you can uh, observe better 
and see what is coming and see what is needed better than the Rajasic one because Rajasic is totally determined to go his way uh, you know breaking the walls but that breaking the walls may be very a lot of energy you have to spend and the result will be very little but it is better than tamasic better to be rajasic definitely and that's Sri Aurobindo speaks about this all the time in the essays of the Gita because tamasic is much worse Vladimir, the, it seems that uh, these, these categories are clearly defined, but for most people, that they're mixed, aren't they? I mean, we, we cannot identify particularly as one or another, but we can tend towards one uh, guna, but we have the others present as well. Absolutely, absolutely, totally yeah. agree. And uh, some part in you may be very sattvic, other part is very tamasic. And even that, you can feel that you are different personalities in different parts of your being. In the mind, you can be purely sattvic, but in your vital, you can be rajasic or tamasic or something else. Mm -hmm. And in your body, you can be very tamasic. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's like one, two, three. Mind is more sattvic, vital is more rajasic, <laughs> and uh, body is more tamasic. That's usually the scheme. Yes, and I think you make a, a really important point about the uh, emotionalism and excitement that we're expected to bring to life. Uh, mm -hmm. It's It's a... It's a difficult issue sometimes for people doing yoga because uh, you want to have a, a detachment, a pretty much a sattvic attitude and be detached and be able to take the long view and a dispassionate view. But people you're in relationship with or people, just friends even, expect you to respond emotionally right. in some ways you know with excitement and anticipation and all that surrounds it you know with an emotional emotional response to activities or, so you have to fake yeah. it otherwise you will not have friends <laughs> <laughs> you're so well, concerned my <laughs> god what happened <laughs> yeah <laughs> i guess some some people will do that otherwise Yes, otherwise he will be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, very misunderstood, right? And sometimes it is also in the family, in the relations, especially yeah. when you are... <laughs> but luckily you are both in the yoga, so it is easy to, to be, you know, <laughs> balanced. Yeah, it's, it helps with, 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 between us, it helps. Right. <laughs> Oh, it's already a huge help if you have someone <laughs> with whom you can be yourself <laughs> without pretending to be someone. It's a big, big help. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, I can see this. And uh, we learned to fake, I learned to fake it. I'm telling you the truth, yeah? To be concerned, this small talk, you know, small talk thing. You are, you are not really for this, but you will do it because it's needed. It's needed for social, socializing, this and that. And you can also squash out of it some interesting uh, kind of uh, phenomena or knowledge. Usually it is already turning to be kind of uh, adventurous, interesting. Yeah? But yourself, you would never go into it unless life is pushing you into it. Yeah? So you are not seeking the party, you are not seeking the excitement of the senses, you're seeking something else. And when it comes, it should be... It's like Sri Krishna says in the first chapters here, remember? For the one who, for the Muni, so to say, we are not yet Munis, but still we are on the path to be Munis. For the Muni, this excitement they, of the... The day is day and the night is night, yes? And for the ordinary personality, the night is day and the day is night. So it's exactly that. What interests you deeply is something boring for the ordinary people. Ordinary means those who are not interested in these topics. 
but um and i saw this many times in my life and but uh, for what is uh, for them excitement for you is very boring <laughs> so you can't stay there in that party because it's so boring it's killing your brain <laughs> and so you have to go but you have to stay because you know because you will be misunderstood i hope my friends uh, from fountain don't think about themselves <laughs> Yes, Gita Sri, you don't think that it is the example from our parties we had. We had such a lovely time. We were joking and and endlessly until we were crying already. So much jokes. Can I just say something? Yes. I was. Uh, I just uh, wanted to. Uh, by the way, I'm glad to be back in the group again. It's been a while. Yeah, nice. Um, it's been a long while. Um, I just wanted to say that it, to be har really harmonious, though, we have to and uh, include the negative in the sattvic and the positive in the rajasic and the positive also in the tamasic. I mean, there's both sides to each one of those, correct? Very nice. I'm very glad that you brought this topic because they are all needed in a way. It's not yes. like that only tamasic is uh, tamasic bad. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mainly it is bad for our spirit. It is from the point of view of the spirit we are looking at it, Yeah, of the yeah. De developmental paradigm. Yes, it is not good. Well, I look at the tamasic sometimes as a as a as a person or a being who really knows how to let go of things <laughs> doesn't oh uh, you know uh just there's uh that would be the positive side for me is to the tamasic person really knows how to let go of all of situations doesn't may, let things bother him maybe you are mistaken uh, that is sattvic mm -hmm. actually it's not tamasic. is it really yeah freedom ah. from attachment yeah because oh. tamasic doesn't have that freedom of attachment it's totally wrongly involved yeah it's mm. something else it's a kind of creating a total misconception bewilderment of some kind it is not a way out actually mm. um, oh. it's, it's it's you're getting deeper and deeper into the trouble in a way I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're like in the swamp. You're kind of um, you're not free. You're not flying free because you're tamasic. You have only sattvic mukta sangha. This is the first word, free from attachment. Uh huh. So, what would be the positive side of the tamasic then for you? For the rest, what would be sleep? Oh, rest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Even even sleep cannot be totally tamasic because it's not good, totally yes. Because right. then we are very heavy, no, no. we we are not rested, and uh, Jayashree was uh, giving us the course on this conscious sleep. Is this is difficult to do because we are used to be tamasic when we fall asleep, and to be you know sattvic to be aware, or even rajasic to start with to go into sleep is very uncomfortable for us yeah yes. Yes, we want is. to forget we want to die for that night and wake up a new person or something yeah we don't want to continue to be conscious in the sleep i mean something in us i don't say we as full yeah? some part yes. in us yes yes uh, is drawn to this uh, oblivious uh, tamasic state of uh, you remember how Shebindo starts the first canto in Savitri? Uh, and there he describes, and Mother gives a very interesting uh, commentary on, on the night where the, the earth is, it wants to fall back to sleep because many attempts the earth tried to break through this tamasic uh, drowsy state and it never worked out at the end. So it falls back into Thomas and it wants to be in that oblivious state 
of not yes. being aware. Mm. Something in us wants this, you know, dissolution into nothingness. We yes. even, something in us even wants death in that sense. You know, you will, mm. you will stop being this all the time effort, all the time trouble. So it's so nice to, to stop doing that, to become totally lazy as it were. Um, mm -hmm. And that is Thomas. Exactly. So yeah, that is okay. positive in a way. That's the positive. Part. Yes, I see. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, any other positive you can find. Uh, there are many things. Yes, but I will, I'll search. Because <laughs> I know that certainly is a part of me. There's no question about it. <laughs> yeah. And you see here this um, Vata, uh, Pitta and Kapha. Yes, we are <laughs> those who have Kapha a lot. <laughs> they know what is tamasic what is to be lazy yeah like we can enjoy laziness also there is joy in tamas you yeah? for example mm. and on sunday morning when you don't have to go anywhere in your pgs you're sitting the, with coffee and you can do things which you usually don't do so it's a little bit um, funny way of uh, making tamas also positive mm -hmm. yes not doing anything it's also very pleasant <laughs> not rushing not planning uh. no that's great i understand traumas more than from that thank you yeah mm -hmm. but then now the, the rajasic person the positive side for the rajasic person would be that this person really gets things done correct kind of done yeah. yes you can rely on him in doing it at least yes mm -hmm. he will right. be he will be pushing 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 planning yeah. uh, which which is sometimes even too much when people are planning all the time you know next day mm -hmm. next week next month they're planning and live according to the plan this is the rajasic kartha yeah right and um, sometimes it looks to me like they don't live at all. They just figure out something in the mind. And according to that, yes. they frame their life. They miss all life, you know, all mm -hmm. the real life mm -hmm. because of that planning. But it is mm -hmm. a part of reality and one has to also embrace it and to learn to plan and live according to the discipline, to the rules which you created. It's important. If we totally yes. neglect it, we become tamasic, we fall into again. Mm -hmm. This struggle between tamas and rajas is ongoing. So it's good to have a balance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Balance is not easy to achieve, you know. Usually when we want to have balance, we fall into tamas. And then we want to get out of that tamas, we start to rajasic action. Yeah? Um, balance is a new quality. This sattvic doer is a higher quality of consciousness. Uh, it cannot be done by imitating it. It mm -hmm. cannot be done by me saying that I am now attached, detached from the, you know, from the attachments. I'm free from the attachments. I will convince myself. I will not say I. It will not change my state. It needs a real change. I have to be that. <laughs> he gives us a hint what is how to see things, yes. But to become that, we need much more than mm. just knowing it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, said, like you said, Padme, the mind and the body. So the, the I feel like my mind is very rajasic, and my body is very tamasic. So I am constantly in this strife. I'm like, oh, I had planned this. I have to do this. Okay, now it's twelve o'clock. I have to attend this because I my mind is saying that, and I'm like, oh my god, I also feel tired, and it's just constantly in this whole hustle. Interesting, what you notice because that's what Sri Aurobindo describes about something about india in a way um he says that india india because of this spiritual you know zeal to achieve higher consciousness neglected the middle part of this rajasic vital activity 
and lost the grip over the realization in matter. This is his ideas, which are quite interestingly, okay, we can see them. What you said, it's exactly confirmation of that. So your <laughs> mental activity is highlighted, but your vital says, oh, but there's so much has to be done for that. How can you really, better, better we wait, you know, <laughs> wait for better occasion or something. And... Yeah, and I see people around me here. I mean, they are so mm -hmm. active and I really want to be that active. But I'm so, I get so tired and I'm like, and it's like very confusing for me. I, I am like sleepy, but I also want to do things. And then it just gets me into this middle path and I'm like or oh, I don't know what to do and I don't know how do they have so much energy to still be doing so many things in life I'm so tired yeah this is a, a first discovery in the west people are active god knows where they are running why why they cannot stop they have to do everything the whole day they are doing something <laughs> And from one point of view, from the higher point of view, it's such a small, small doing. Yeah? There's nothing big. There's no big work. They have, they have kind of discussing such small things that you're even tired to listen to it. <laughs> but still, they are constantly engaged in perfecting the matter, perfecting the relations with matter. It's a great sacrifice. I, yeah, for, for me, it was the same surprise when I came to Norway. I thought, are they crazy? All the yeah. time they are doing something. Cannot stop, cannot sit down and just think for a second. <laughs> yeah, I, we are thinkers so... and they are doers. You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I times now when I, I mean, when you're saying, I'm also just reflecting that at times I would get zoned out in the class and I was like, oh my God, it's so much. I need some time out. I need to not listen to this. It's too much of data entry happening. Yes, and when they speak, they speak this, this interestingly about this apprehensive cognition. They are piling up things. For them, it is very normal. They have a strength in the in the vital to hold on to it. And people from India and myself do not have that strength to hold on to all those nitty gritties because they are less important. I look at them as, as secondary, you know, and because of that negligence in me, I cannot really master them. I can feel this in me. Yeah? So I'm kind of describing yeah. what could happen in the mind of this type, who is interested only in the higher things and cannot handle just normal life. Then it also gets you like as high it gets, as low it gets, I think, because I, I'm not really working on perfecting the matter in the physical, then I can't also concentrate. So if I can't co concentrate, I can have an experience of the higher consciousness, but then, I mean, I can just swing back to the lowest and then because it's the same. Absolutely. Both A very, very good description. And what happens when you fly a high? then you fall down because the middle is not holding you, you know? Yeah. The middle is not really formed, this rajasic. And once it is formed, then you will not fall down. You will be stopped there somewhere in the activity and it will save you. So this balance between these gunas is profound. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is very interesting for me. I have to build that up. I, it, it constantly keeps knocking. And yeah, through through I, that specific specifically the matter in the physical, yeah, it's just a lot of work. And did you notice, especially in my case, when I see no enough is enough, I have to make order in the physical. You clean everything, you make your clothes order, you, there, you everything is clean, and you feel so good. You feel. Finally, you can live, you know, that that part in you which was neglected for so long is taken care of. It's the same with health. I neglect my health. I neglect everything. It's some kind of not enough strength to to deal with the physical. Yeah, I mean, that's that's very, you, you, what you say is very relatable. Like, I, like, for example, my, my flatmate, he's going to get up, he slept now, and he'll get up again at 6.30, go for swimming, and then whole day he'll be on it. Like, where do you get this energy from? 
I have to have a nap for my siesta time because <laughs> yeah. they go for swimming in meanwhile, you know, something. Yeah. Or working in the garden that. and then coming back very happily. Yeah, it's very surprising. I was like, maybe it's my body, but then I realized I also noticed a, a few, a couple of other Indians in these classes. I was like, no, it's not just me. I go, I have been going for running every Saturday. I'm still, I still, I'm the like one of the last fourth or fifth runners, and despite doing it for so long, I was like, why do you guys get get so much energy? I'm trying, but it's not happening. But it's good you are you are building it up. You know what uh, Vivekananda said about. Uh... Uh, the youth of India. He said that I would not give them Bhagavad Gita. I would give them a football. Because yeah. they are weak in this part. In the Bhagavad Gita, they are strong enough. And this is an amazing uh, insight, actually. It is something which is lacking in the, in the development of this over-spiritualized personality and direction of living. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're right. And this thought is coming that the sadhus, the yogis also didn't work on the physical. Yeah. And so the physical is obviously not developed because the work has not been done historically. And yeah, it's just... And even philosophically, it's admitted that it should be like this. This is the way to go. To, yeah. to neglect your outer nature, to neglect your physical being to the extent that it will perish and you will go to the spirit. This is the idea. Yeah, if not for Sri Aurobindo and Mother, everybody would think the same. Yeah, you, you think why Mother created that, you know, the, the department of this, uh, of the physical uh, exercises in the, I forgot already the name of it. Why or every every child, every adult, even Mirod there, and everyone walks in front of the mother in shorts, you know, you know this, the beautiful mm -hmm. um, younger and older, all of them have to get grip over the matter. We cannot leave it to to the hostile forces or to the lower vital desires. Uh, so this balance between sattvic knowledge and vitality, which is dedicated to the sattvic uh, greater uh, light uh, and physical body, joins them. This is the ideal of uh, the Gita also. You know, yeah. The yeah, it's so it's it's after reading Mother and Sri Aurobindo, I'm like, no, 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 spirituality does does not mean that you just have to sit and meditate. It's also beyond that. Yeah. And mother actually didn't like meditations much. You know that. Yeah? She yeah. did this, but she didn't really encourage that on the regular basis that every day you have to spend three hours with closed eyes. It doesn't help really. Yeah, It's mm -hmm. not the way to go. It is needed, but um, in its own place. Yeah. Great, thank you for sharing this. These are great thoughts. So, if you have nothing else to say, then I, I do. I have something else yeah, that I want to add. Um, so that the negative part of the Satwik would be that it it is kind of keeps us in intellectual knowledge and doesn't let us rise higher. Is that would be that the negative part of the Satwik? Very nice. I like it. You are now looking for the negative in the positive. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> right. Uh, sattvic attachment to to sukha to happiness is another problem. When we yes. are attached to our happiness, everything has to be, you know, beautiful. No raising voice. You have to be in that. Mm -hmm. That becomes also problem because it it is an attachment and it blocks you away from finding your spirit uh, somewhere in, maybe some of you know this castaneda somebody read this castaneda yes yes and here yes i liked it in one particular regard where he says that um that the 
what will be your next enemy is this attachment to uh, to clarity of thought <laughs> this kind of this becomes the enemy yes the clarity of thought itself and you liking it liking knowledge becomes your enemy in a way because then you will start making it you will start reproducing it you will start living that middle zone and will not move forward will yes. not find the truth beyond this is something of uh, the negative part of yes yes Atva. thank you yes um i want to clarify something um well, first is is this the only place where we can find all of this meaning about the sadik rahashik and tamasik or is coming from another another source is the gita the only place or the first place when where we can find it yeah it's the first place where you can find it after that there will be many uh, commentaries discussions a lot of literature but this is the uh, where it was originated in this way of thinking yes nice. that's why igita is so important for for Hinduism, it's considered to be like, like the Bible, you know, in Judaism. It's a small Gita, only seven hundred uh, verses, uh, is considered to be so profound. And and then after after the Gita, it was considered the 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 balance of all of these three, the the Mukti. No, interestingly, Gita was again misinterpreted. Even Gita, which is speaking so clearly about this composition of man and looking beyond and going beyond, was misinterpreted again and again and again, million times by everyone, actually. Um, if you read the the explanations when i was in the university i was reading many um, commentaries on the gita from tilak from gandhi from shankaracharya they don't see in karma yoga that what gita sees what sri Aurobindo sees in it they see the duty uh, samatvam yoga uchyate indifference attachment as a detachment from the activity as detachment not from the desire but from the activity together with desire because it's very difficult to separate desire and activity so all these things are not clarified it's only in Sri Aurobindo that we read a new meaning you know, that meaning of the Gita as I believe that we have to be composed, we have to have all the elements, nature is doing its work, and we have to allow it to do it, but we have certain priorities, preferences, to be more sattvic, yeah? it's an it's a ongoing process of discovery. It's not something what I want to be only sattvic. Sattva is only a step towards the discovery of my true self. And without sattva, it's also possible, by the way, but it's more difficult. I think I'm confused now. Oh, sorry. It's, I, it's like um, when when I know I'm confused, I think I'm in the good pathway. Good, isn't yeah. It? Me too. Yeah. <laughs> when I don't know something, I'm so happy. Finally, there will be something to discover. <laughs> When you think everything is clear, it's, well, it's that's boring. Worst position. It's a fake position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what I want to say, sometimes I can see the uh, tamas, rajas, and sadbek like a leather that coming up, and you have to to go beyond sadbek. But uh, another times I see. Uh, tamas, rajas, and and sad, sadbik and sadvas, sadba, 
it is is a three is a trinity where you have to try to find the balance with all of three to be transcendent. Then I don't know which one is the correct one. All of them are correct. All of them are present simultaneously. Okay, you cannot one cannot be without the other. You see, in the in Sankhya, it is described in a very beautiful way. When Purusha attends to Prakriti, Prakriti mixes these gunas. And the mixtures create the world. All the world, all things in the world, starting from the higher mind, buddhi, towards the physical being, are the mixtures of these gunas. Um, there is nothing here pure sattvic or pure rajasic or pure tamasic. Nothing. This is the mixture where one predominance is taking place. In the higher buddhi, there will be more sattvic predominance. Yeah? In the physical, lower physical being, there will be tamasic predominance. It becomes stone, becomes tamasic. It is not sattvic. Yeah? The bones, the body is more tamasic. And it should be so. There's nothing wrong about it. But uh, it depends where we want to go. If you want to go into the body, become the body and be the body, then go. <laughs> if you want to go beyond, so you have to r rise to buddhi. And from buddhi, from that step, you may see beyond there is the witness there, which is beyond sattva. It is not sattva. In, um, presentation by Radhe, some of you have been there, she made a quotation on sattva, which was very interesting, from Sri Aurobindo, that sattva is a representative of the higher soul, or the higher self. It's not made from the lower kind of elements. Yeah? It's not the result of, of the balancing between rajas and tamas, as usually mentally we see it. It is a new quality which is directly connected to some higher capacity. And that is interesting because it, what we try to explain here also, the same story, that you cannot gain it by mimicking it or, you know, you have to, to get the realization of that self or some glimpse of it to be sattvic. I think uh, it's about the transformation of the gunas like sattva changes from, uh, you know, it's a lower prakriti to the higher form of jyoti. Mm. And tamas becomes sama. And rajas becomes, um, I'm forgetting what, but the three of them convert into their higher forms. From common rajas, from common tamas, rajas and sattva, which is ordinarily prakriti in our lower nature, when the lower nature transforms into the higher self, higher nature, prakriti undergoes a change and all the three gunas undergo transformation. So the inertia of tamas becomes the calm, the steadfastness. And the activity of rajas becomes the shakti. And uh, the sattva becomes uh, jyoti, light, in its highest form. Really? So the three gunas get transformed also. Lovely. So that is the yoga. The integral yoga is transforming the gunas to their real properties. Yep. Transformation of nature. Wonderful. I, I love it. And uh, somewhere, Sri Bindu, I mean, the, the beauty of sattva, that sattva is not the highest in the transcendental. The tamas is the highest in the transcendental. And this is something unexpected, you know, that the divine being, the divine existence, which is the most tamasic here, is becoming the most, the highest, the fundamental there, which holds everything. And sattva is only that result of uh, luminosity of consciousness, as you rightly say, and energy. But notice interestingly that this is also the triple supermind, um, which is which is more unifying, diversifying, and diversified. Three 
levels of the supermind, which then are reflected in nature as mental, vital, and physical. And they fit so well into these ideas of gunas because they are the result of this predominance of one of these gunas on these levels. So it's not just the concept, it's something more than concept. Yeah? It's a power which works in this way. We chose to work in this way to create the worlds. Many times they also compare them with uh, Vishnu, Brahma, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, which I don't like. So I will not bring it forward because I don't believe that it is, um, I, I think it is more mechanical because they want to justify Trinity and so with Gunas they will do this. Vladimir, I think you said that uh, the Gita is the scripture that brought out the three Gunas. My understanding was that it was all already an important part of Sankhya. And uh, just doing a quick Google now, I, I find references to it uh, for people who are pretending or are claiming to teach the Vedas and and Vedanta, especially Vedanta. But uh, uh, wasn't it a, at least uh, uh, an important part of of Sankhya? Maybe not so much. Maybe not applied to the same extent. Yes, but, absolutely. Sankhya hmm. is built on this. This yeah. is the fundamental prakriti or pradhana. Pra prakriti mm -hmm. consists of these three mm, qualities, which are in equilibrium when Purusha yeah. does not attend to them. But the moment he attends, the moment he delegates out of himself his faculties, she starts mixing, building them up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you really need them to explain pradhana and the work of, of prakriti. Yeah, but and, uh, now are they are they also uh, prominent in Vedanta? Vedanta is Upanishads. Yes, there is yeah. very very little, but Vedanta is spread from from one thousand BC to one thousand AD. You know, there are so many Upanishads. Yeah. So yeah. if you consider that to be Vedanta, then yes. Actually, the the concept of the gunas also came from Ayurveda and Atharva Veda. Uh, Atharva Veda, I don't remember this. Ayurveda came Ayurveda. from Atharva. Well, Ayur... that is considered to be, yes. They, they find the source in the Ayur... Atharva. Atharva Veda is totally mysterious. Nobody knows the timing of its composition. It joined the party later. Yeah, because the before it's Trividya is mentioned all the time. So when Atharva Veda joined, Trividya was already formed. That means uh, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda and Sama Veda. And they were redistributed Rig Veda Earth, Yajur Veda space in between heaven and earth, and Sama Veda heaven. So it was already complexity which was not requiring Atharva Veda. Hmm? And then Atharva Veda joined in Brahmanic period somewhere. It doesn't. It didn't have even Brahmana, Atharva Veda, because it joined later. So new Brahmana was composed specially for Atharva Veda, Gopatha Brahmana, to make it, you know, part of the. Um, but still, it is felt that it is. Um, it joined the party, and the very content in Atharva Veda is always. Um, magical, you know, all these kind of curses, um, uh, cures. Uh, there, are, there are few very beautiful hymns, also very highly uh, like uh, Vedic hymns. But the language itself is much closer to our classical language, interestingly. But the format, the content is very magical. Yes, magic structure of consciousness. Uh, this uh, uh, formulas, uh, magic formulas all the time. <laughs> cursing someone to lose the love uh, or cursing someone to to get uh, sick or to be, uh, you know, to get rid of the disease. And from there it came to so-called to Ayurveda. 
but um, it's more like uh, building up the lineage uh, to make it. I I'm not sure even that it is at all true. Yeah, because I know of Atharva Veda quite well. I don't see there that lineage. I see that it is quite artificially declared in Ayurveda. Everybody believes in it because it is in the system. Yeah? So why should we not? But uh, there is no much evidence of this. And that is interesting. Uh, only in the content of curing and cursing, causing the disease and removing the disease. But you find it in the Rig Veda, as, um, as Radhev truly said, and it is already there with Ashwins. Ashwins are the first uh, cures, uh, those who cured uh, the gods and the human beings and the rishis. So it might be also there. Um, I don't want to argue. I'm just saying that uh, sharing with you my thoughts on Atharva Veda and on the uh, Ayurveda. Ayurveda, Sushruta Samhita and Charaka Samhita, they are of much later time, most probably 500 AD. Um, and language is very close to the classical Sanskrit already. There were ancient texts which they refer to, Kashyapa Samhita, which was lost, yeah? which we have no access to. But uh, it could be that. So what did you want to say? I'm just kind of arguing with you for no reason. Jayashri. Oh, you're asking me. I don't know. My knowledge is not much. I was only saying what I have read uh, was that um, Ayurveda came out of Atharva Veda and in Ayurveda they have this Sankhya philosophy of the Prakriti and then how creation was formed and how Prakriti uh, uses the gunas right. uh, mix, like you said mixes them up and you know creates nature yes yes that's what uh, also Radha had made in yes it's the same thing Right, but it is Sankhya. Sankhya is 800 BC, the oldest yeah, text. And Gita is creating this Sankhya, which is pre-Sankhyaic Sankhya. Sankhya comes later and it takes over all the philosophies, all the Hinduism, yes. But not in Atharva Veda. There is no Sankhya in Atharva Veda yet. There is no Sankhya in uh, the Gita or in the Rig Veda at all. And uh, I was always wondering because our famous Vama Deva, yes, uh, he, he wrote so many things referring uh, gunas and this way of thinking and viewing to Rig Veda. And I don't see it at all. We can argue about this because I don't see it coming from there. Rigveda has totally different uh, position or different knowledge. The gunas are not yet there. Gunas are more already of the conceptual mind of mental structure. They're closer to us, to our times. It's already a philosophy of some kind. It's a philosophical view detached from from the events yeah? it's already kind of trying to learn to know by the mind you can see it it's very tangible in a way okay i think we can it's only three shlokas so long talking <clears throat> But there is no other way for me also to explain myself about these topics like Ayurveda, Dharva Veda. So I take the opportunity to say what I think about them, you know. So you just uh, have to take it in that context. That uh, finally I was given the floor to say something <laughs> on Dharva Veda and uh, Ayurveda. And I translated many texts. With Kashyapa, there is Kashyapa with uh, Arogya um, Center in Albuquerque. I was invited several times to go there, and we worked with his students on different texts. Yeah, 
and they are profound. You, I must tell you, these Ayurvedic texts, this is something we have to look into. It is in itself a treasure. Not, not as a, as a practice of, uh, you know, of the medicine, but as a philosophy of life. It's an amazing vision. And maybe for Charles and Teresa, it would be interesting because they are into that, how to make things harmonious. This vision of human being from the point of view of elements which are participating in building up the universe, it's always look from up down, not from bottom up. From up down, you have the concepts, you have the forces, and then you see how these forces come together and play out. And then once you see them, you know what is required for this body to find the balance. So unique, so beautiful. Not, not curing the diseases, just balancing the system yeah, in the right way. It will cure itself. It has a power of to cure itself. It doesn't need this one disease to, to deal with, to drill. But both are needed, Rajasik also. Great, we can stop here and continue next time on Buddhi Bhedam, on three types of Buddhi and three types of Dhriti, and three types of something else. Dhriti and Sukha. <laughs> we will look also three times of happiness. Okay, we'll close with mantra. Om. Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashchit Dukha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Adiós. Namaste. 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 Namaste.